G'day folks, this is Ed here presenting my advanced electrolysis system. I've been using electrolysis for the last two years or so for cleaning machine parts and things. This one runs on 24 volts DC from an old photocopy of power supply. Roughly 12 amps, 15 amps, maximum current. It's actually from the original machine that this stand is built out of, an old DI 620. Get down in there. I'll try and keep as much dust out as possible, but eventually it does build up after a while. That one's actually well and truly due for a clean out, although it's been going for six months without any problems. Right now I've actually got it running in reverse where the old compressor pump in there is actually the sacrificial anode and it's cleaning the bulk of the rust off the anode plates in there to increase efficiency when it's running the right way. I've reversed these two leads around to reverse the current flow. Normally the red lead is connected up here and it's a sacrificial anode lead. The black lead here is the part to be cleaned, the cathode. Eventually I'll be stripping this old CNJ speed reducer down and cleaning the iron parts with it. So it's essentially the same system that I use to clean up the parts on this lathe. Cooling coils are good for hot days when the electrolysis solution starts to boil after about 24 hours or so, or almost reaches boiling point. The pump did its main seal a couple of weeks ago, so that's out of order for now. But since the hot weather's gone, it probably won't be a major issue. Electrolysis does produce a bit of hydrogen in the form of bubbles on the surface. It's always wise to be careful when grinding or smoking nearby. There's been a couple of times when I've detonated the bu bubbles by grinding nearby it, but of course there's no major damage, just a bit of brown slurry spl sprayed all over the place. Of course any large electrolysis system will produce enough bubbles to create a bit of a disturbance if they were to detonate. There's quite a few videos out on YouTube about home electrolysis systems. Basically all you need is a plastic drum, much like this one, to cut the top off, a box full of baking or washing soda, and a DC power supply, usually a battery charger in the home hobbyist case, although you can use switch mode power supplies. Computer power supplies tend to be a bit too sensitive, so they shut down if you get a bit of a power surge through them. The photocopy of power supplies that I've been using, the smaller ones don't tend to last more than a couple of weeks, but the big ones like this one just keep on going. So if you can score yourself an old photocopier like this one, you should be on your way to a reliable, energy efficient electrolysis system. Of course, the smaller the gap between the part being cleaned and the sacrificial anode plate, the more current it's going to draw. And obviously if you create a dead short by accident overnight, you may well blow your power supply. So it's always wise to put an overload protector or a fuse or something in the circuit just in case. So this one's been going pretty well so far. The other advantage of these power supplies is if you do short it out, they generally shut down and protect themselves. Whereas a battery charger, if that shorts out in the middle of the night, you'll probably end up blowing it up or burning something. One thing to note when making an electrolysis system, a lot of people seem to recommend using stainless steel anode plates since they don't degrade as quickly as mild steel. However, Using stainless steel creates a solution containing a lot of chromium 
which is quite poisonous to the human body and the environment in itself. Therefore the year's solution will be classified as a hazardous or toxic waste and should not be contacted under any circumstances. Again with stripping old equipment or machinery of paint, a lot of that paint also contains lead. So care must be taken to dispose of the solution properly after it's been used. Right now this solution is fairly new, although it looks like crap. It's actually quite safe to contact. There's no chromium and no lead in it. And it well, pretty much can be poured down the drain safely since it's just baking soda and water plus iron oxide and a bit of old paint residue. But of course if you do have to do stainless steel or something that's covered in lead paint try and dispose of the waste as safely or at least discreetly as possible since it is toxic. <laughs>